Right, this next lesson is focusing on both Richard and John. And it's going to look at how England was governed, how England was looked after while Richard was absent, and then how it was different to John. Now, what we need to understand is that during Richard's reign as the King of England, he wasn't actually in England that much. So we need to look at what Richard did to make sure that England was looked after while he was away. Then we need to look at what John did while he was king and the similarities and differences. So if we look at the syllabus, the exam board expectations, we are on this topic here, how England was governed when, when Richard was absent. So this key, this, these dates here are key. 1189 to 99 was when Richard was king. And then 1199 to 1216 was when John was king. We've got to look at how England was looked after when Richard was absent, but then also look at how England was looked after while John was there. And look at the difference in their ruling and look at the similarities between them and the differences. So today's big question for the first part of the lesson is Richard neglected, didn't look after, the government of England in the years 1189 to 99. How far do you agree? Now remember, and how far do you agree question is a 16 marker. And we're just going to quickly go through how you're answering this question because you do need to make sure that you're putting a lot more detail into these so the first thing you do is you agree with the statement and what we're looking for here is we're looking for three point evidence explain link paragraphs we're looking for specific detail explanation must reword the question but the most important thing with this question is, is that you judge your evidence. And you do that through your link. So you say, overall, this evidence is fairly useful to show why Richard neglected the throne, because you judge how strong the evidence is. This is setting a criteria. And it will allow you to access the top marks when you uh, sit your GCSE. The second thing you should do is you disagree with the statement. Now, what we're looking for here is we're looking for another three point evidence explain and link paragraphs. You can do them all together, but make it obvious each time when you're starting it. So another reason why I disagree is another reason why I disagree. Exactly the same as above. And then the third thing you should be doing is writing a Geon conclusion. So judgment. Do you agree with the question? Explain. Explain why. Oh, on the other hand, you look at the other side of the argument and give brief explanation. And then nevertheless, go back to your judgment and finish with a mic drop piece of evidence. Basically, end the essay well. So nevertheless, I agree because and give a really strong piece of evidence that's going to impress the examiner. So remember, the 16 mark you should be spending about half an hour on with 30 minutes. And to be honest, this should be your lengthiest piece of writing. I'm looking at three pages, but don't waffle. Keep to the point of the question. You keep rewording the question. If your evidence is good and you keep setting that criteria, you will get a really strong mark in this 16 marker. So, we need to start going through once I get rid of the last slide, we need to start going through, did Richard set England up well? Did he neglect England while he was away in 1189 to 99? So, 
you're, I'm going to go through some information and while I'm doing this, you've got to create a table. And in this table, you've got to have on one side, Richard did a good job. Now, if he did a good job, that means he did not neglect. If he did a bad job, then he did neglect. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting you up for that 16 marker, looking at that he did neglect, did a bad job, did not neglect, did a good job, did not neglect. Now, while I go through this, uh, the next lot of information, you need to fill in this table in as much detail as possible for revision. This is an overview, and we will go through Richard and John in a lot more detail in Unit 2 and Unit 3. So the first piece of information is that Richard only spent six months in England during his 10-year reign. Now, a few people are probably sitting there going, how did he only spend six months in England? Well, it's very simple. Number one, Richard went on a crusade, 1189 to 1191. Number two, Richard was captured, 1191 to early 1193. And number three, Richard spent a lot of time in France, capturing back Normandy in 1194 to his death. In 1199. So Richard wasn't in England much during his 10 year reign. Now, why could this be seen as bad? Well, he can't be as um, authoritative. He can't complete his oath of things such as crown wearing, where he was supposed to be seen with his crown three times. He can't provide King Justice. So that itinerant kingship. You could also argue that without the king, rebellion may be more likely, especially from areas like Scotland and Wales. And there's also a problem of what if barons become too powerful they could become over mighty subjects. And what that means is, is they attempt to overthrow the monarch with their army. So Richard only spending six months in England is problematic. You could also say that Richard not being there could lead to mistrust from his barons. So what Richard needs to do he needs to set up a system where he is still in control, but has people representing him. So say, for example, I was to go off school, I would need to make sure that there's a system in place where I'm still in control, but I have people representing me, but the people in my department to make sure they are still doing the job that I want them to do. So that's the first piece of information. Now remember, you need to be putting this in your tables as you go with a little bit of explanation. So I'm helping you with the explanation here. Is this good? No. This shows that potentially Richard did neglect the throne. When Richard became the King of England in 1189, he arrested Henry II's most unpopular ministers and had them dragged around in chains. People who were arrested by Richard's father without a trial were released and Richard gave land back to the people who had lost it under his father. For example, Robert, Earl of Leicester, who in return helped defend Richard's land in Normandy. Richard rewarded the men who mattered. He kept the barons on his side. This shows that Richard did a pretty good job. There's two reasons why. Number one, everyone who his father, Henry II, had upset, he made peace with. He gave them their land back. He released them from prison. This is positive because these men are going to respect Richard and help control the country while he is away. 
that's that is one really positive thing. The second thing Richard did, Richard kept the barons on his side, making sure they would not rebel against him while he was away. He gave them enough responsibility to be able to go away and let them control aspects of the country. For example, Robert, Earl of Leicester. Richard knew that he, did, he couldn't reward everyone. But he only rewarded the people who mattered. He rewarded the people who he should keep on side that would help him develop the country while he was away. Thirdly, there's a key word coming up here that's quite important that we need to know. The kings could use power of patronage to give gifts. Make sure we spell that right. Gifts of land and important titles to their followers. Richard worked hard to get important people on his side. For example, William Marshall, who almost killed Richard before he became the king. However, Richard forgave him and gave him land in Wales and Ireland. Wales was important as Richard was worried about rebellion from the Welsh prince, Welsh prince, sorry, Lord Rees. Right, again, is this good or bad? It's good. Why? So firstly, number one, Richard knew who to keep on side. One being William Marshall. Now, William Marshall was one of the greatest knights in Europe. And by keeping him on side, the army would be on Richard's side. Not just this, but by giving Marshall land in Wales and Ireland, it limits the possibility of invasion in England. This is a very clever move as it allows. Richard to be away knowing that he has someone who is feared across Europe. William Marshall was a very intimidating individual and the fact that William Marshall almost killed Richard but Richard forgave him means that William Marshall would have developed a respect for Richard that would have allowed him to go on crusade and leave the country, also work with Richard when he was in England. The next piece of information. Some of the positions that Richard sold took advantage of people. Now I'm just gonna add something here because it's important that you know this. To raise money for the crusade, Richard sold positions of power, such as chancellor, sheriff, etc. Now, this could have been a huge problem because people who got positions of power did not earn them, did not gain respect. So it goes on to say that some of the positions that Richard sold took advantage of people. One of these was sheriffs. This was because they made a profit under the system of tax farming. Tax farming is when a sheriff goes over their tax target and can keep the rest of the money that was left over. Some sheriffs became very aggressive to collect as much money as possible. So I'll just develop that a bit more. Sheriffs collected taxes. Now, in England, sheriffs were given a target to collect. It was known as tax farming. If they collected more than their target, they could keep the amount they made. This meant that some of these people 
became very greedy and took advantage of the people. Who would get the blame for this? The blame would be Richard because he put them in these positions of power. This suggests that Richard did neglect the throne because he was giving power to people to make money. He made this money, well, to make this money, he was trying to go on crusade. So you could argue that he was doing it for the right reasons, but to run a country on people who were going to take advantage of them wasn't going to work. As I mentioned in the previous one, this is going to be quick, this slide, to raise money for the crusade, instead of giving people land and titles, Richard sold them. He needed a huge amount of money, so he sold jobs such as chancellor and sheriff, which was a bit of a mistake. As people didn't respect people who brought their title, such as William Longchamp. Richard even said that he was willing to sell London if he could find a buyer. Now, in our previous lesson on medieval town, you know how important London is. If Richard was willing to sell the most important town in the country, it shows that he is neglecting the throne somewhat as he was putting finance over people's well-being. Let's say we'll quickly move on from that one because that was explained a bit in the last slide. Richard also made sure that the borders of England were safe. Before he went on crusade, he met with the, kings of Wales, the King of Wales and they promised him they wouldn't attack while they were away. He also made an agreement with the King of Scotland, William the Lion. Richard acknowledged that Scotland was independent and in return, Richard got 10,000 marks off William for his crusade. Why is this such a good move? This is such a positive move because it means that Richard limited the threat of invasion while he was away. Nice and simplistic, it shows that he had forward thinking and people weren't going to invade while he was trying to gain Jerusalem back from the Muslims. Now, just as a bit of a backdrop here, remember in the previous lesson, it says here in 1191, John was allowed back in England. That's because when Richard became king, he banned John from England to try and prevent him causing trouble. Now, when John was allowed back in 1191, John rebelled against his brother. John set up his own court and was collecting taxes from the people. John took over Nottingham Castle and was helped by a lot of barons who hated William Longchamp. Whose fault was it that William Longchamp was there? It was Richard's. Why? William Longchamp paid for the job. The barons hated William Longchamp, which meant the barons helped John rebel. John was chosen as regent, which meant John was looking after. He was basically like a stand-in king. While John was regent, he taxed England heavily, joined forces with Philip, and tried to trick England by saying that Richard was dead. Now, a lot of people might say this isn't Richard's fault, but the fact that Richard made William Longchamp the Chancellor, shows he neglected the throne and put England into a bad position, especially when Prince John invaded in 1191. This caused big problems. Why? Firstly, he joined forces with Philip, which could put land at threat. John made the people angry by taxing them heavily. And also, people were worried because of rumours of Richard's death. We're going to look at that in a bit more detail in a bit more detail later. But this shows that Richard did neglect the throne because if it wasn't for him making Longchamp the Chancellor, John might not have had as much influence. And we're nearly at the end of Richard. Richard was captured in 1192, and because of this, England had to pay a huge ransom. 
a ransom was a huge amount of money, a massive amount of money that um, for someone important. Now, in those days, you didn't kill someone if you captured them. You either put them on trial or you charged a ransom. This ransom came close to bankrupting England. When Richard came back in 1194, he forgave John, and this led to John being recognised as heir to the throne. Heir is the next in line. Did Richard neglect the throne here? This ransom suggests, yes, he did. The ransom came close to bankrupting England, and we'll look at that in a lot more detail in Unit 2. And the last piece of information that you should be recording in your table. In 1194, Richard left England again to go to Normandy to get it back from Philip. While he was in France, he left England in the hands of Hubert Walter, who was very capable and had worked with Henry II. He was also Archbishop of Canterbury, so straight away, Richard did not make the same mistake. He put someone in charge who could be trusted. He did not sell it off like he did with William Longchamp. Richard and Walter put a strong system of government in place while he was away to make sure, and he made sure that laws required his authorization. So Richard still controlled England while he was away. The agreement between Walter and Richard made it easy to run England for the five years that Richard was away. Once again, this makes it a lot easier. This shows that Richard didn't neglect the throne because he put a better um, system in place while he was away. So you could argue that Richard did neglect the throne to a degree, but on the whole, he put most things in place that were going to make it um, strong. Now, what you need to do is quickly just pause the video. If you're not filled in your table, go back and add pieces of evidence and explanation in to so this table here. Once you've done that, you're ready for task two. So pause the video here, and then once you've done it, you can go on to task two. Now, task two is you going back to that 16 marker and writing a G on conclusion. Now remember, the G on conclusion needs to focus on the question. So going back to your table, did Richard neglect the throne during the years 1189 to 99? Your G on conclusion is, in conclusion, Richard did or did not neglect the throne government of England. This is because two to three lines of verbatim. On the other hand, look at the other side. So if you think he didn't neglect the throne, on the other hand, you should say how he did neglect the throne. And then nevertheless, go back to your judgment and give a mic drop piece of evidence. If you spend five, 10 minutes writing that, you can pause the video here, and then you can start on the final task of this lesson. So just to clarify, you are writing a G on conclusion based on the evidence that you've got from this table here. Spend 10 minutes writing that conclusion before we go on to the last task. So if you pause the video here and write this conclusion. Right, the last task. This is a small overview of Richard and how John governed the country in the years 1199 to 1215. Now, what we need to understand is how different was this be? So we've got to understand, first of all, that John really had a tough time. Okay? When he became the king in 1199, um, he, had, he had everything in place. But this is what we've got here. Look at each bullet point. In the first six years of John's reign, his main focus was defending his land in France. This meant he didn't change much because the country was looked after without a king during Richard's reign. For the first six years, John didn't change much. Why? Because it worked. He did a good job because he kept the people in place. 
So the second bullet point says, while John was defending lands, his regent was Geoffrey Fitzpeter, who had been one of Richard's justiciers. Now, a, justice, a justiciar is someone who made judgment in court cases. Geoffrey Fitzpeter was trusted to do the job and people liked him. John showed in the first six years that he did a good job because he kept things the same. However, by 1204, things started to go wrong. Why? Well, by 1204, first of all, John lost one of the most important pieces of land in his empire, Normandy. This turned a lot of people against John. But when John came back to England, he had a lot of people angry. And he changed a lot of things that caused people to turn on him, which we're going to look at a lot, a lot of detail in Unit 3. The first of all, he chose new men to advise him rather than the parents. I'm just going to do a little thing a little check box. Um, remember, the feudal system. You've got the king and you've got the tenants in chief. Now, the tenants in chief were the barons. Now, under this, under this system, the barons expected the king to come to them for advice. They expected to be important people. Remember this while I go through this. This part here is really important to remember when I go through the rest of this. By choosing new men, the barons were angry because they were expected to help advise John. John's new men were dependent on John for money and took advantage of their job to get more. The experienced feudal barons were ignored and excluded. So John was ignoring people they should have kept on his side. On top of this, a lot of, just jumping to number four quickly, a lot of these barons, which would before by Richard, were trusted and they were experienced. And John was excluding them and not allowing them to do their feudal duty. So a lot of these men were scared that they were going to lose their land. The next thing John did, he was quite negative, is he closed down the court of the king's bench. Now the court of the king's bench was a royal law court in Westminster, which was the headquarter of royal justice. Now he also ended the practice of sending royal justice to shires to hear cases. He basically, what John said was, is that cases could only be heard if John was there. So if anything went against the barons, John would get the blame because he was the one that was giving judgment, which made John really unpopular because the barons thought they would have John's loyalty. But John showed he wasn't very loyal to his second most, well, his most important group to keep on side. John was cruel to those who displeased him. For example, William de Broisey. Now, William de Broisey owed a large debt to John. John lent him his land, and de Broisey didn't pay it. Now, in return of this, John captured de Broisey's wife and son and starved them to death. And it was so bad that when de Broisey's wife and son were found, the wife had actually eaten parts of her son's face to find a fair life. This made a lot of people, a lot of barons, hate John. He showed that he couldn't rule the country very well because he chose cruelty over caring. So your job is to answer these seven questions. Okay. One, why could you say that John did a good job in his first six years? Two, who was Geoffrey Fitzpeter? Three, where did John lose in 1204? Four, what was the court of the king's bench and why was it bad that John shut it down? And just, just um, going back to that, the court of the king's bench, it was bad because this was the headquarters of royal justice. And it meant that all the judgments that were recorded, um, they, they weren't being recorded as often, which meant it was more difficult to pass judgments as time went on. Number five, why was it bad that John chose new men? Give us number six, give an example of when John was cruel. And number seven, why were the barons so angry? 
So if you pause this video and then answer those seven questions in full sentences, and then that will be the end of the lesson. If we just go back to the very start of this exam board syllabus, we've looked at how England was governed when Richard was absent and you made that decision, neglect, not neglect. And we've also looked how it was ruled during King John's presence, 1199 to 1216. So there's only a few more lessons left of unit one for us to cover. And remember, you can go back through the YouTube channel and look back on old videos that we've done so far um, in this unit of work.